Carolina and Company Live is sponsored by the businesses, organizations, and groups featured in this program. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of WPDE ABC 15, WWMB CW 21, or its employees. You're watching Carolina and Company Live. Your source for fun, entertainment, and events. With your host, Cecil Chandler and Amanda Sellers. If it's happening in the area, it's on Carolina and Company Live. And hello, everybody. It's a Thursday, getting closer to the weekend. And talk about a great show today. We've got so, yeah, this. The, boy, we got a great show lined up today. What was it? Lottie, <laughs> Dottie, and everybody. And everybody. That's <laughs> right. That's for Benny Swans right there. Anyway, we do have a great show lined up. As always, first up, we are going to check out our weather. All right, let's go ahead and show you some of our live webcams. The overcast skies still continuing out there through uh, Myrtle's Inlet, uh, North Myrtle Beach, for example. A couple of hit and miss uh, sunny skies as well, according to our METAR data at the airport at uh, MYR showing sunny skies. Again, there are some pockets of sun. I wouldn't say it's completely sunny. Uh, temperatures are warming up, though, in the 50s right now across the area. 50 in Florence, 50 Darlington. 52 in Laurenburg and 54 here at our studios in Conway. The big story is the dew points along the Grand Strand in the 50s, indicative of that east to southeast wind throwing on Atlantic moisture. Still bone dry across the PD and especially west in 95. That will change our new uh, storm system coast to coast, essentially, and uh, border to border as well. Tale of two weather systems in one winter weather to the north, severe weather to the south. Take a look at just how colorful this map is. I'm going to going to step off so you can soak it in. Blizzard warnings from uh, essentially Fargo through Pierre, South Dakota, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, out through uh, western Kansas, the UP of Michigan under winter weather advisories, tornado watches for New Orleans and Jackson, Mississippi, flood threat for Charleston, West Virginia, down through Atlanta, Georgia. So a little bit of everything. Here's the severe weather threat, though, because this is the line that actually will impact us tomorrow. A couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. In fact, one injury has already been reported by these winds that just blew through portions of Mississippi only about 20 minutes ago. We're still getting reports in. All the severe ingredients are there, including a very strong jet stream moisture feeding into the south as that warm front lifts to the north. Some warm air providing that storm fuel, that instability for that severe weather to develop. And just for good measure, let's throw a low level wind jet creating that wind shear. So all of the dynamics Perfect for some severe weather across Louisiana and Mississippi. If you're traveling along that I-10 corridor today, hitting the roadways, take it easy. You got family on I-10. Uh, just not a day to be there today, unfortunately. As that warm front lifts to the north, we're throwing some Atlantic moisture on us. Maybe a few isolated scattered showers uh, after the 2 o'clock hour along the Grand Strand. Overcast skies overnight. A few isolated showers across the PD. Here comes that secondary warm front. That Actually, the true warm front uh, lifting through our region 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock tomorrow. Some moderate showers, maybe some heavy showers, maybe a rumble of thunder or two. No severe weather with it. And look at the cold front weakening significantly as it moves our way through the region. So no severe weather tomorrow no flash flooding, even though we're expected to rinse and repeat with a new storm system on Sunday, new storm system on Tuesday, new storm system next Thursday, five to seven inches well to our west, one to three here in Myrtle Beach through Tuesday. Seven day forecast. Well, it was a rainy year. It's a rainy end to a rainy year. Friday, storm system one, Sunday, storm system two, storm system three coming either New Year's Eve, midnight, or New Year's Day. Lots of questions regarding that timing. I can tell you storm system number four most certainly coming on Thursday. Agreement is good to go in the models on that. Oh, the rain. I know. Oh, it. Can that's you okay. It? It, all it's right. all right. Maybe, you know what? It's going to be nice Sex, and rainy you tomorrow. She's got to do better with that weather forecast. She's got to do better. See, so. <laughs> I do, I do a great job. He does a you great, do a great job. job. Fantastic weather, job. All right. All right, let's talk about today. Today is Thursday, December the 27th, and it is National Visit the Zoo Day. And it's also throw out all the leftovers from Christmas. That's right. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Go ahead. You want to do it? All right, it? let's do it. I'll do it. 1966, Bill Goldberg 
This guy here is 52 years old. He played NFL, let's see, football. He's now a wrestler. <laughs> Former WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. 1979, Walker Hayes, 39 years old, country singer, 2010. The song Pants. Also, Why Wait for Summer? And You Broke Up With Me. All right, 1981, Emily D. Raven, 37 years old, on the ABC TV series Lost that was on. Also on The Hills Have Eyes. Ooh. Also on ABC's Americano. And before fame, she trained as a ballet dancer. Very cool. I think it's always neat to see what people yeah. do before they, you know, know make fame. All right, 1964, Today in History, the Supremes made their first appearance on TV's Ed Sullivan Show, if you're old enough to remember that. All right, 1971, Snoopy, Charlie Brown, Linus, Lucy, Woodstock of Charles Schultz, Peanuts comic strip, strip, they were on the cover of Newsweek magazine. All right, from the know-it-all department today, where you learn something every day. There are about two million saunas in Finland. Two million now. Sign okay? me up. Yes. Enough for the entire Finland population to take a sauna at the same time. Plus me going. <laughs> Plus I'll see you, you later. Two I'll be at the spa and the sauna. Can wow. you believe that? Huh. Are they, right. I wonder if they're like that, spring, like, you know, the hot springs. Is that what they're I talking don't know. about? I didn't say. That's what I know at all department today. <laughs> Whoa, that was a good one. <laughs> We've got a lot coming up. We'll be back. Okay, the Champion Autism Network uh, has an event coming up December 29th. That's a cool place called Dave and Buster's in Myrtle Beach. We're going to find out more about it. That's right. Always sensory-friendly um, events that they put on, as well as sensory-friendly movies. And you guys have another really great fundraiser coming up, too. We've got lots to talk about today. All right, let's talk first about the event at Dave and Buster's. Okay, the event at Dave and Buster's starts at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. It is before Dave and Buster's opens. There is a cost of $21, but that does include a buffet and a $15 game card. The advantage of going to the sensory friendly event versus going when they're open during normal hours is the lights are up. They turn off everything that they can except for the games sure. so that it's not as overloaded and loud and stuff. And I mean, it's not as crowded because they're not open yet. There really is a huge difference for wow. the kids between going, say, at 8 o'clock on a Friday night versus <laughs> 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Well, you know, and, and for families who have children with autism, the spectrum is huge. It's, it, it varies, uh, you know, drastic to mm -hmm. just a little bit of sensory issues, but going on a regular night is just out of the question. Right. So this We've is tried. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. Becky? Yeah, it's just absolutely overwhelming and overstimulating. They've got TVs, lights, you know, all kinds of flashing things. So to have as much turned off as sure. possible and have it be quiet and it's over stimulating for me so yeah. I, I can't I it can't I mean, to be too. honest I can't yeah. imagine now, All right. you know Dave and Buster's just one of the places that's come across to help with autism and you know getting things across to people we have been really blessed by the support by many um, organizations and Ripley's Aquarium holds sensory friendly events every month Wonderworks as well um, that's wonderful of course we've got our sensory friendly bowling birthday bashes um, at the Myrtle Beach Bowl and uh, the movies. Am I forgetting anything? Yeah, movies? no, yeah, movies. let's let's talk about a little bit about sensory friendly movies that okay. you guys do. The sensory friendly movies are an event that we do almost every month. Any new release movie that was kind of typically kid friendly, we are going to branch into some of the older movies too for some of our adults with sensory needs. Cool. And it's the Saturday after the release and it is lights up. There's no trailers. So you go right in. The movie starts promptly at 10. Um, it's a Maybe event. they turn the volume down a little bit. The volume is down and they adjust it as needed. We've actually been able to work with them and they're like, if it's too loud, we can turn it down. If it's too soft, awesome. we can turn it up. And they're really great about it. So that's Very amazing. Cool. Yeah. That's amazing. I tell you girls, y'all do a great job working with autism and everybody because 
In the last 20 years, this has become more aware to people about this. It has. Yeah, true. Yeah. A Absolutely. growing population, but uh, we're really doing great things, and we thank you so much for your continued support and promoting Absolutely. of what we're trying to do. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely, and I Happy think I'll New see Year. you in a couple weeks for some big chef's challenge. Ooh. You guys, I've heard a little bit about it. Yes. She's going to be back in a couple weeks to talk about All it. Right. Thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. All right, Becky, Katie, thank you all so much for being with us. we got a lot more coming up. We'll be right back. All right, talking about during the holiday season, you know, everybody's relaxing. They're, they're not really thinking about doing a whole lot of anything, That's but true. that means the Red Cross suffers a bit with people donating blood, and it's one of the high-demand times that we see. Just like summertime, the holidays are, are the same. That's right. Everybody's traveling, visiting family, and they don't take time to give blood, and this is a time that they need it. It's That's, critical yeah, for them. It, it is a critical time. Amy's with us now, and Amy, let's talk about this. Yeah, let's talk yes. about Red Cross and what you guys need right now. So every day in the state of South Carolina, we need to collect 200 units of blood to make sure that we have enough on hospital shelves to help people who are uh, suffering from cancer, preparing for surgeries, or, you know, just the regular car accidents that might happen. So right, right now, shortage-wise, how, how short are you really? We're heading into the critical time, which means that we only have three days worth of blood on hospital shelves. So we're asking people to please come in and really make a difference. Give something that means something. Now they can come wow. to your to the uh, office there, right? Absolutely. Tell Caroline, them where you're located. Carolina Forest, right by the Kroger and Carolina Forest. We also have a great blood drive tomorrow in North Myrtle Beach at Kitchen's Table and on Friday at the Florence Civic Center. And if you come in, you'll be able to get a free long sleeve 
t-shirt. Oh, look like at that. Better. Yeah. Those look awesome. good. All right, there you go. You get a look at shot at them right yeah, there. There we go. That's Perfect. very good. But it's, yes. it's, it's the time that we need help right now because people are traveling and they can go somewhere else yeah. that they don't go. You know, like if you go here all the time, but I'm out of town, I can go here. So they could come to you. That would be great. We welcome everybody who wants to come in of all blood types. Each donation will can help save up to three lives. So that really does make a difference. Wow, there, fantastic. There's, there's the website right there where you can find out. Can they call ahead and set up where it won't take Absolutely. long? Absolutely. If they go to redcross.org, they it is. can sign up. You could get your rapid pass. You can call us at 1 800 Red Cross and we'll help you make your appointment. You can't I, breathe I have that. a question. Tomorrow's event sure. in North Myrtle Beach. Yes. You said, um, what time is that and where again for people to come out? It's at the kitchen table. It's from 8 until 1. Okay. So please join us and you can make an appointment online. Fantastic. That's right, go online. Amy, how long have you been with Red Cross? I was just going to ask the oh, same question. I started on September 10th and I'm very happy. I've been with American Red Cross for five years and moved to Myrtle Beach and you guys have given me such a warm welcome. Awesome. So well, thank you. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, thank you so for much. You're doing. All right, don't forget it's time to give. It's getting critical. That's right. We'll be right back. All right, the Georgetown County Sheriff's Office has teamed up with the National Child Safety Council for the 24th year, I think it is. Wow. Yes. Wow, that's unbelievable, helping educate kids and everything. And, yeah. and Jason's with us now Yeah. To talk a little bit about that, yeah, an old newspaper guy. <laughs> old newspaper guy. Talk, <laughs> talking about um, you know, distributing educational materials to children, what, what are you guys doing in 24 years of doing this? Tell us about it. Well, we have a, a room full of materials, uh, lots of workbooks for kids, coloring books, um, uh, interesting ways to present uh, the child safety uh, message, and we give those out over the whole over the whole year. Okay. Um, what is the child safety message? What are we talking? Well, about? you're talking about if you would if you would find a gun, for instance, sure. whether you're even in your own parents' house, uh, be careful with it. Tell your parents. Uh, other if other kids are doing something dangerous, uh, you would you would learn to. Um, uh, say, see something and say something. All right, this is something that's so neat. Uh, let me tell you, Sheriff Cribb does so much in the community and doing things, Jason, and you help promote it and everything. This, anybody that wants material, can they just come by the office or how does that work? Well, I'm sure you could uh, yeah. give us a call. We yeah. could make a program for any kind of a group, um, Sunday schools, um, school groups, PTAs. Uh, we want to get the message out. Uh, it's about uh, uh, being aware of strangers yeah. uh, all the way to... Um, um, police officers police being, officers your, but being your, friend. your friend, yeah. Police, you know, police officers are not someone to, that you uh, need to fear. And in 24 years, we're, we're to those original people's children by now. If they were six years old when right. they first heard this, they're 30 now, they have kids of their own. You're right. So we're in our second generation of, <laughs> of child safety promotion. So, so really important information for children to learn. It's also nice, you know, sometimes they'll, they will listen to their parents, but it's yeah. also nice to hear from the professionals, and that's what you guys are, are doing. You're allowing, you're coming and talking to mm -hmm. them because they tend to listen to you guys better than well, yeah, they do. Us. Yeah, they do. Sergeant Robert Patterson is uh, heads this up and he's a former uh, drill instructor. Ooh. So he oh. gets their attention. Y'all <laughs> do so much. And I tell you, without, you know, without this safety, because kids learn, you know, like the youngest thing I can remember a long time ago about a fire. 
What do you say when a fire? Drop. I'm going to tell you to roll. Drop, roll. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Stop, roll. Drop, yeah. yep. Stop roll. drop and roll. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and you do learn, you know, those things as well. I think one of the biggest things for me is police officers are your friend. People scare children into believing, well, call the cops yeah. if you're not good. That's not, That's not a good a thing to, to teach it. kids. It's, it, police officers mm -hmm. are there for your safety. And that's part of what Always, you guys yeah. are talking about, right? That's a good that's thing. Right. Public safety. All right, so All if right. there's anybody watching right now, a school, a group, or something like to have Jason, uh, the gentleman that puts it all together come and talk to you about safety, they will do that. The website right there, go online, check it out, and talk to them. Hey, guess right? what? Served yeah. more than 16 million children in that amount of time. That's wow. incredible. That's a lot. Yeah, this is a big, good. big Thanks program, and it goes all over. Mm -hmm. Jason, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Thank you very much. Tell the sheriff we said hello. Happy New Year. Uh -huh. You got it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you too. All right, we got more coming up. A police officer's here, and he's got a beard, and we're going to find out all about why. So if, if you see any of the policemen uh, for Myrtle Beach growing a beard, they're all doing that for a fundraiser, right? That's right. It's, it's for charity. Now, all cool. this started. I got Paul with me. Yeah. And Paul's going to talk. He's got a full beard. Look at this. Now, how long have you been that. growing that one, Paul? Since November 1. November 1. All right. all right. Now, you've been to the police department how long? Oh, I just started my 19th year. 19th year. All right. Now, tell me about this beard thing. You know, what's what's it all about on a charity deal? And, and wait, and is it yeah. kind of funny to see everyone Everybody. with a full beard? Or can some people not grow them? Huh. I can't. Well, grow. it's a mixed bag. But uh, <laughs> we uh, last year was our first year doing it. Um, as you know, uh, we had a, got a new police chief in uh, May of last year. So a lot of new things were coming about. So, um, so you uh, right there. Yeah, some of them here. Go yeah, ahead. Last year in uh, November, we uh, pitched the idea to her for the No Shave November. And, um, and the proceeds from that, it was uh, $20 an officer. And um, the proceeds from that went to the Shop with the Hero program. Mm -hmm. Well, and, that is uh, great. And now y'all change it up a little bit, don't you? Right. We change it up from month to month. I kind of press my luck with Chief Proc a little bit and, and <laughs> keep asking for a little bit more. We're kind of like her children, you know, ask a little, <laughs> little bit more each year. Um, and then last year, um, it sprung into December. And then this year, we, um, I asked her, and uh, she graciously let us uh, go to, no, uh, to January. And uh, January is uh, called Beards for a Hero. And the money from January is going to go right to the Joe McGarry Foundation. That's a good one. All right. I now, so. I've got to ask you this. How, uh, roughly how many police officers are growing beards? Uh, we usually average around 100 per month. 
So and, and the money from that goes yeah. right into the, the McGarry Foundation. So some of these guys that really love having a beard, it's their opportunity for yeah. three months, and they but it goes back to a donation. So it's kind of fun for them. Right. It, uh, you know, it, it boosts the existing morale already, yes. and um, plus it's something that the it, you know tr as tradition goes back into policing, people are see the uniform clean shave and high and tight. Yeah. And now you know we try to. Um, you know, ideally, well, you want to get a cross cut of the of the society that we we serve. So, and and your beards are coming like a commonplace. So sure. we've got a lot of positive feedback from the public also. All right, now you shaving yours off when? Uh, it would be uh, January 31st. Okay. Gonna say la vie say to it. <laughs> Is this your first time for the, a beard, or you've had it before with it? No, last year we oh, had it. Y'all did it yeah. same thing. But up to that point, the last year is clean shaving every day for work. You kept a mustache though, right? No, sir. Nothing. No. Everything goes. No, my mustache doesn't look that good without the beard. <laughs> <laughs> look at mine. I'll mm -hmm. tell you, I've been drawing this one 35, 40 years. I don't remember. It's been it's a long like a time. It's like a trademark now. It's for been you. a long time. Well, That's I hope right. y'all do this again because it's a good cause. And it gives you a, a different look at law enforcement. Right. You know. Also, um, you know, not only is it the donation go into to fund the, the foundation and help sustain a lot of our community outreach programs, it helps uh, keep Joe's legacy alive, which tomorrow yeah. will be yeah. the uh, 16th year um, God. For that he's been taken from us, unfortunately. I covered um, that. And it, it helps keep his legacy alive. Joe was a good person, and uh, he did a lot to protect his community. And uh, it helps him remember him that way. More than anything else, it helps remember Joe. All right. Awesome. Oh, we, pre we appreciate you, brother. We really do. That's right. And, for the, and for the guys that are listening, December 31st is the deadline to get your money in for January. Uh -huh, you, you heard hear that, that? guys? <laughs> or you're going to be in big trouble with the boss, right? Be able to grow a beard. Big Thanks trouble. A lot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stick around. We'll be back. It's funny, it's crazy, and you never know what Cecil or Amanda are going to say or do. Hollywood! <laughs> it's Carolina and Company live weekdays on ABC 15, a fun show that makes you laugh and makes you feel good about where you live. If you just moved to the area, Carolina and Company Live is the show you need to watch. You'll find out about everything going on along the Grand Strand, PD, and Border Belt. Check it out weekdays at noon on WPDE ABC 15. All right, we've had a great show today. I love that program the police department's doing, raising yeah. money and giving the kids, I mean, the guys a chance to uh, grow a beard. Yeah, and it boosts, like you said, the morale and the camaraderie yeah. between the guys, too, and really gets them to fight for a good cause. So, it anyway, really hey, is. good show today. Hey, great show today. We had a good time today. Put it on. All right. <laughs> Don't forget, tomorrow's Friday. The weekend's back again, and uh, we've got another great show lined up tomorrow. Hope you're going to be back. Don't forget, I hadn't said this lately. Tell a friend about this show. We that's let right. you know everything that's going on in the air. And if you want to be on the show, just give us a call and you can come hang out with us at noon. We'll see you guys later. Have a see great afternoon. Later. See ya. Carolina and Company Live is sponsored by the businesses, organizations, and groups featured in this program. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of WPDE, ABC 15, WWMB, CW21, or its employees.